The following program comes to you live from the Apostolic Church Ghana Community 5 Assembly. For more of this and other useful resources, log on to TACC5.org or like our Facebook and YouTube pages at TACC5 Media. God bless you. to be amongst you once more. I told you last week and that this is really home. Home. That I've been going to church, but I've missed church. Praise God. And I thank God for what he's doing in the life of this particular church. Because this church has become something else to the rest of the apostolic world. It's become a light on a mountain. It's become that light of hope for many others. And when I say church, I'm not talking about buildings. I'm not talking about structures. I'm talking about you. So you have become an example and God is going to continue to lift you up for the glory of his holy name. Hallelujah. I thank God for the presbytery for what God is using them to do in this house. Uh, let me say that you have the strongest presbytery in this church. You, you will not understand till you go elsewhere, okay? Um, you really have a strong, strong presbytery um, with a balance, praise God. You have the cool people and you have the hot ones. And it's, it's, it's a balance for the glory of God. Thank God for all the teams that are working to make sure that things go well. And I thank God for our anniversary that is just at the door. And I like the way you are dressed. Unfortunately, the announcement didn't get to some of us. So, yes, um, that's why we are dressed this way. So, forgive us. Shall I bow our heads for a word of prayer? Just ask God to touch you through the ministry of his word. Ask him to do something new in your life. If you're watching us on the net, the Lord is with you. Also pray that he will touch you wherever you are. For the spirit of God knows no distance. God does not travel. He does not hurry. He's there with you. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We adore your holy name. You are a good God. Full of grace and mercy. We thank you. For what you are doing. For what you will continue to do. Let this day be a day of significance, O oh God. Even as your spirit touches our lives through the ministry of your word. Have your way once more. And let it be said, this is the doing of the Lord. And it's marvelous in our eyes. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to share some few words on the extra mile of faith. The extra 
mile of faith. The extra mile of faith. And what I just mean by this is that faith goes the extra mile. Faith goes the extra mile. My key scripture is in Judges, the chapter 8, the verse 4. It says, And Gideon came to Jordan and passed over. He and the 300 men that were with him faint yet pursuing them. Praise God. And what I want you to take note of is faint and yet pursuing them. Just to give you the background of the story, Gideon was raised by God as a judge for Israel. He, he didn't have faith in himself and we all know the story. But at the end of the day, he was going to face an enemy that had more than 120,000 soldiers. An enemy that had troubled Israel for so long and impoverished them. Israel could plant their crops and then the enemy would bring its animals and pass them through and destroy everything. Fear everywhere. Even Gideon himself was so scared. But then God picked him up and said, I'm going to use you to save Israel. He said, who am I? Yes. And God used him, but God reduced his soldiers. You know, you are going to face over 120,000 armed men. How many soldiers do you need to overcome them? But God reduced. In the first place, Gideon didn't have many soldiers. They were dwarfed to about a quarter. So God had to do something to make him know that it's not by might and neither by power, but by his spirit. So God reduced his soldiers more. Reduced them to three that is, naturally, you call it madness. Madness. How can 300 men defeat more than 120,000? But God gave him that victory. And he killed the enemy. And then, you know, in times of war, when you're killing, then some will be running away. And you see, if you don't kill the kings, <laughs> you haven't yet won. So the kings run away, and Gideon and his soldiers, the 300, were chasing those kings to make sure they capture them and finish them. And when they were running, they got tired. And hungry. So your God has given you victory. Yet. You need Kappa. To continue the victory. I want you to know that. Are you here with me? The fact that God says I will prosper you. I am going to be with you. Does not mean it comes on a silver platter. No. There's going to be some sweat. There's going to be some burning of energy. Some people think Christianity is a club for lazy people. Think twice. I've never seen God bless a lazy man. Never seen it yet. Maybe you can show me one. Because I believe God has so made it that laziness should never lead to prosperity. They were chasing these kings. They were chasing them. They were faint. I mean, why God, you are with me. You are giving me victory. Why should I still burn energy to make sure it happens? Do 
God says he's going to give you victory in your examinations, yet you have to study, keep awake at night. Yes, go the extra mile of faith. God says this is your year of significance and we are in October. You haven't seen anything yet. The extra mile of faith. Will your faith be strong to cross the rest of the distance? Or you are going to let it go? So they came to some towns and, and Gideon asked the people there, give us some food. My men are faint. The people said, no, won't give you any food. Ooh. So still without food, they pursued. They did what? Pursue. Tell your neighbor, pursue. Pursue. Ah. You know, there are going to be times when you are going to feel faint. You are a man. You're human. I've seen Christians come to points in their lives. They said, I can't take it anymore. Oh, I don't know whether I'm telling your story. I can't take it anymore. And I tell them, no. If you say you can't take it anymore, I want you to change it. And rather say, I don't want to take it anymore. Because if you want to, you can. God's strength is available. To those who want to go the extra mile, what you need is strength. And he says his strength is available. So it's not I can take it. He can give you the strength to take it if you want to. But sometimes you just say, I, I can't. No, it's not you can't. You don't want to. Today I came to encourage someone to get up. Pick the ashes again. Because it is not over until God says it's over. Praise God. It is not over until he says so. Going the extra mile fulfills the natural selection of faith. It talks about the diligence of faith. In their faintness, they continued, they pursued till they caught those kings and killed them. You know, you have to complete your victory. Is somebody hearing me? I said you have to complete your victory. So long as God has given you victory to this end, he can give it to you to the end. So don't give up. You know, success has its own way of selecting those who deserve it. And those who deserve it are those who don't give up. And listen, everyone is going to feel faint close to the end. And that is where faith selects those who must end successfully and those who give up. Those who rely on just their strength will give up. But those who rely on the one who never grows weak will continue. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You know, one thing is that so long as your enemy does not say he or she is tired, don't get tired. One time, I don't know who preached, but he was saying, I know, my enemy will get tired before I get tired. Praise God. Praise God. And I have never heard the devil say I'm tired. <laughs> so tell your neighbor, don't get tired. Pursue, pursue, pursue. Continue until victory is won. And the people that do know they are God, they shall be strong and they will do exploits. Those who know they are God, they never give up because God never gives up. When he's dead, you still say there is life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the God you serve calls those things that be not as though they were. 
When everyone says it's over, don't say it's over. Because sometimes God waits for the strength of man to end. Then he takes over the show. He takes it over. Don't give up. It happened also in the time of Moses when the Amalekites came up against them in battle suddenly. And Moses told Joshua, gather the army, fight in the valley. I will stand on the hill and raise the rod of God. And Moses was there with his hands raised with the rod of God in his hands. And the Bible said, any time Moses' hands were raised, Israel had victory. And when his hands grew weary and he brought them down, the Amalekites began having victory. But thank God, Moses was not alone on the hill. Praise God. Praise God. No matter your anointing, you need support. How I wish all men of God will hear this. Because some men feel so powerful, they think they, they, they don't need anyone. They can do things by themselves. You are going to run down. There's going to come a time when you will grow weary. It's those you have gathered around you. And don't gather yes men around you. Some pastors just want people who just be telling them, yes, 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 yes. That's all they want. They don't want people who can tell them you're wrong. If you are a minister, you don't have people around you who can tell you you are wrong when you are wrong. Your life is not safe. Is somebody here with me? Your life is not safe. Gather real men around you who can stand with you when you are growing weary. You know, David raised real men around him and when he grew and he got weary and they were about to slay him, the very soldiers he had raised saved his life. That person you are helping today might be your salvation tomorrow. Is somebody here? Maybe? That's why you don't only invest in yourself. It gets to a time, begin investing in people. Because it's going to get a time when your graph will begin to go down, but those you have raised will be going up and they will hold you up. Moses' hands were weary, but Aaron was there and her was there. And no, Moses, his hands were weary. He couldn't do it alone. Come on. If Moses couldn't do it alone, you should know you can't do it alone. But Aaron and her put a stone down, sat him on it, and held his hands. Hallelujah. Amen. Until the victory was won. It was a spiritual anointing doing it, but it needed some physical kappa as well. Don't give up. Praise God. Don't give up. It is God. But he says you have to pray. Don't stop praying. Continue. Don't stop. Tell your neighbor, I won't stop. I stop. Hallelujah. Moses' hands were held up. Why I'm going with this message is that when you feel faint, don't faint. Full stop. When you feel faint, don't faint. Don't faint. And if we look at Psalm 27, the verses 13 and 14, it says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I don't know whether you see it, but what kept him from fainting? was believing. Praise God. I had fainted unless I had believed. Faith is energy. Hallelujah. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. 
wait, I say, on the Lord. Praise God. When you feel faint, don't faint. Go the extra mile of faith. When you feel faint, don't faint. Go the extra mile of faith. Some are feeling faint in their marriages. Others are feeling faint in their jobs. Others are feeling faint in their health. Others are feeling faint in their relationships. Others are look, feeling faint in their expectations for the year. When you feel faint, don't faint. Go the extra mile of faith. Praise God. One time, David felt faint. He was not yet king. He was not yet king. But these same enemies, these same enemies came and took his wives and the wives of his soldiers and their children and they left. One day we should preach about the Amalekites and left and when David and his soldiers came and realized that they had banked the city where they were and taken everything away they cried men cried and the bible says they wept till there was no energy in them to weep, to weep. and the little energy that was left the 600 soldiers said let's kill David he had led us into all this trouble hmm. You are faint, you are crying, and you are hearing, let's stone him. So you are almost about to die. Almost about to die. That is when you have to do what the lepers did. They said, hey, if we stay here, we will die. Sometimes do critical analysis in seconds. If I continue thinking the way I'm thinking, Feeling the way I'm feeling, I'll die. If we go back into the city, if we go into our past, we will die. That if we look into the future with faith, we shall live. Are you here with me? Sometimes you do critical analysis in seconds because if you delay, you are dead. And the Bible says, then David encouraged himself. <laughs> when he couldn't find anyone to encourage him, he encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And he rose up in that strength. He pursued. Hallelujah. He overtook them. Praise God. He recovered all and came back. This is October, but pursue because you will overtake and you will recover. I said this is October, but don't faint. Pursue. You will overtake and you will recover because it is not by might, neither by power, but by his spirit. Just rise on your feet for me. Right. I just want you to pray for yourself and, and take some energy. Take, take some energy from the throne. Strengthen yourself from the throne of grace. Yeah, I refuse to faint. Ah, yeah, yeah. Maybe you are having some fainting thoughts. Throw them away and say it is well. It is well. It is well. The Lord is with me. It is well. It is well. It is well. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Begin to talk to God this moment. Begin to talk to God about your own life. Begin to talk to God about yourself. Begin to prophesy and confess upon the land of your life. I refuse to faint. Oh. For even when a righteous man falls seven times, he will rise again. Maybe you are on your knees, but you can rise again. 
you can rise again you can rise again maybe that thing has happened again but God says it is still possible if only you will believe for all things are possible to them that believe it is possible it is not over it is possible it is possible you look around, there is no help around. But the psalmist says, lift up your eyes. Lift it up onto the hills. From whence cometh your help? Your help cometh from the Lord. Look in the right direction. Look in the right direction. Look in the right direction. And you will receive encouragement. Your strength will be renewed. You will mount up with wings as eagle. You will run and not be weary. You will walk and you will not faint. For the one you serve, he never faints. The God we serve is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Father, give us strength. We refuse to faint, darling. We come to you that you might renew us, Lord. For we refuse to faint, O oh God. We decide to stand by faith. Faith in you. Faith in you. Faith in you. For they looked unto you. Their faces were lightened. And they were not put to shame. We look to you, Lord. 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 Have your way amongst us. Have your way amongst us, oh God. And let your name alone be praised. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It is possible. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise, Father. Take all the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. You can take your seats. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us today. We trust that you have been blessed by doing so. Join us again next time. For more information on our activities as a church, visit our website at tacc5.org or follow us on Facebook and YouTube using the handle at tacc 5 media Rest assured in the goodness of the God who gives us victory and makes provision for our daily needs. See you again next time. God bless you.